Hi, Fools. Tom Gardner here with Morgan Howes, a longtime Motley Fool contributor. It's time to talk when to sell. It's not something that we frequently talk about at the Motley Fool because we're so committed to buying. As you say, for and, good reason. And to being a very long term owner of the businesses in your portfolio. But there are reasons to sell. And I've got a handful. And Morgan, I think you, you're you going to be like the assassin here. You just have one. You have one reason to sell. And it's definitely the biggest reason. I don't know if it's the only reason, but to me, the biggest reason is just whenever you need the money. Rather than saying, I'm going to sell when the stock reaches X dollars, or when it does this, or if I think it's overvalued or undervalued, I would just sell when you need it. When you need the money to retire or to send your kids to college, whatever it is, I think if that's your goal, if that's just the baseline expectation, mm. I think there's a lot of evidence that that's the best way to invest. Mm. That selling good companies or selling any companies, uh, it, it, to, it, on average, is detrimental to your long-term success. Mm. Let me give you a, a, a quick example Please. of this. The S&P 500 is made up of 500 companies. Those companies are rearranged every few years. Some are kicked out. Some are brought back in. If over time, there have just been no changes to it whatsoever. The people at S&P didn't kick anyone out, didn't bring anyone, any new ones in. The index would have done much better. Hmm. Just the constant getting rid of things that you don't think are working anymore mm -hmm. tends to be a bad thing mm -hmm. that works against you over mm -hmm. time. So uh, I think just leaving it alone until you need the money is a great mm -hmm. way to do it. Molly Full Stock Advisor, the data shows since 2002 when the service was launched, if we had never sold a stock, Going back to 2002, we would have better returns yep. overall. And the returns are market smashing returns, but we would have had better results. Why is that? I think it's because the companies that you're tempted to get rid of are often companies that are cheap, and cheap companies go on, tend to go on and do very well. That's broadly why it is. Mm. The companies, you know, you're, most people don't get rid of companies in their portfolio that are doing very well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it might make a lot of sense intuitively to say, I've made a lot of money on the stock, let's sell it, let's lock in the gains. But that's mm. not what people tend to do. Mm. They tend to sell the losers. I, and the yeah. losers tend to be, if you're a value, take a value mindset, those mm. would be the tend to be the stocks that have a, a, a higher return potential. I, I will add to that that I think all it takes is selling one or two future big winners too soon that you, Make can't, a big you can't possibly catch up mm -hmm. with what you lost by by missing out on a 10-bagger. It's very hard to catch up with other intelligent cells. So it's better to just collectively hold all of them. Um, I'll add a few when to sell rules to your to your great one. And one of the reasons I really think that that's a great suggestion, Morgan, is because it's personal, which is I think the first way that people should think about selling is, is a more personal question. Don't get too wrapped up in quarterly earnings or is the CEO leaving or what's happening in the business? Do I believe in this anymore? Start from a very personal place. Number one, do I need the money? Number two, is this position in my portfolio too large? Mm -hmm. So certain situations along the way, we end up with a 100-bagger in Netflix, and it becomes more than 20% of someone's net worth. And I think at that level, for me, I would start to begin to think about selling incrementally portions of it. Because as much as it's great to see things run, if they become 50% of your net worth, 70% of your net worth, it actually can um, take over your mindset in life and, mm -hmm. and become too front and center for you on a daily basis and cause you to look too closely at it. So for me, 20 to 25% of your net worth in a single stock, that's a time to think about pairing it back. A second is when it's simply too small of a position to really be meaningful. At a certain point, as some of your companies have gone on to do extremely well, you're a long-term five to 10 year um, you know, minimum holding period investor with us at The Motley Fool. Uh, some of those companies just have drifted down into absolute irrelevance. They're a 0.3% position in your portfolio. And I think at a certain point in time, you might want to collect those together and wrap them into a 3%, 10 of them into a 3% or 5% position that you really believe in. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of cleanup in your portfolio, particularly with transaction costs down at zero. My third reason, which is also personal, and then I'm going to add a business reason. So my third reason is you're just not interested in the company anymore. You don't really enjoy following it. You're, you're, I don't think you have to be reading about these companies every week or every month if you miss a quarterly report, whatever. You can look at your companies every year, every two years, every three years. I really believe that. I think it should be fun for people. But if there's a company you're just not interested in anymore, you should, you should remove it from your portfolio. So we've got those four first rules. One, if you need the money. Two, if it's too large of a position. Three, if it's too small of a position. And four, if you just aren't interested in it anymore. And the fifth one... Um, is, I think, if you think there's a plausible case for this business being disrupted. I think that the pace of technological change is so great that once a company falls behind enough, the problem is the stock will probably be down 30% or 40% already, at least from its highs. But if you're looking at the company and you're, and you're thinking, this is a future JCPenney, I just don't see consumer behavior or businesses needing this solution anymore because something new has arrived. The platform 
upon which business is being transacted has changed, and this company will not be able to make it across the river. So that would be my one real business-focused reason if I think this company is going to be disrupted. Even that can be hard. All in all, I think we both agree. I think you'll get better results if you never sell. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if you don't have income coming in and you want to invest in something new, those would be some places that I'd look to sell your stocks and re reallocate back into your favorite businesses. Thanks, Morgan. Thanks, Tom.